This has been debated by the board, and in fact, uh, the board voted four to one to uh, a petition by letter via the chair. Both our uh, state senator and uh, representative to uh, petition the uh, uh, the board for a home rule petition to exempt us from uh, uh, collective bargaining on the health insurance, or allowing us to do our own plan design, basically, on health insurance. Mr. O'Leary uh, spoke quite eloquently about why we shouldn't do that. Uh, but we were informed, uh, both by our senator and our state rep, that uh, we, as a board, didn't have the authority to do this. Uh, we uh, moved forward on this idea based on uh, a letter that was sent to us from, I believe, the town of Lowell, and uh, or the city of Lowell, uh, where they did exactly this. But the difference was that they have a city council, which is actually the legislative body of the city of Lowell, and town meeting is the legislative body of North Reading. So the article has been put in here, uh, again, by a support of a, a unanimous support of the article, I guess, even Mr. O'Leary. Unanimous to include it in the warrant. To include it in the warrant, Not correct. Unanimously recommend. Right. And uh, uh, this is so the town meeting uh, has the opportunity to vote yay or nay, up or down on this article, uh, uh, which is essentially to petition our legislators to uh, request exemption. Uh, uh, a home rule petition to allow us to do plan design on our health insurance. Any questions? And I think it, Mr. Delaney is going to present this article. I was thinking of maybe no. <laughs> <laughs> that just wouldn't be fair, Steve. Uh, yeah. You were going to pass over it, is that? Oh, one? Yeah. <laughs> article twelve is adoption of an early retirement <coughs> incentive uh, program, which. Uh, is to accept section 66 of chapter 188, 188 of the uh, acts of 2010. <coughs> this was uh, supposedly uh, one of our legislative uh, uh, municipal reliefs, but uh, it's been recommended uh, uh, by town council uh, against it, and uh, you know it doesn't fit the uh, uh, the size of our community and uh, in terms of uh, adopting this program and. Uh, I believe the board uh, is voted not to recommend it, and uh, we'll probably vote at town meeting to uh, move to pass it over. So uh, I guess I'll do that. Any, I, I should have asked any questions. Okay. Article 13, create a special education stabilization fund. The purpose of this, and uh, this is something that the chair has actually proposed on two other town meetings and did not have the support of the school committee. Uh, it's my understanding that the school committee has now voted in support of this article, and the objective here was to set, uh, create a special uh, stabilization fund that we could put money into if uh, we came by it uh, to uh, support the school uh, budget in a future year. A lot of uh, things have come up uh, that have sort of uh, suggested a need for this, and yet as a result of uh, the uh, federal funds, the ARA funds coming in, the school department elected not to spend all of them in a, in a particular fiscal year, and originally I was proposing it to assure that they spend all that money in that fiscal year, and then we would put money that they didn't need into this kind of a fund. As it turned out, uh, on the ARRA funds, the federal funds, uh, uh, they were allowed to carry that money into a future year and it wasn't needed. But I still felt strongly that, uh, and the board has supported this, that we have this uh, availability to put money in to deal with uh, specific budget issues that, that have occurred. Uh, an example might be that we have potentially unspent money in the school budget uh, and if it's left to go to free cash or some other budget left to go to free cash at the end of the year uh, depending on people paying their taxes and other situations that 
available, what might have been available as free cash is canceled out. And this would be a way of putting money in at the June town meeting into this fund to carry it into the next fiscal year, legally carry it into the next fiscal year, where everything that isn't spent goes to free cash. And not that we should be, you know, not accumulating free cash for capital expenditures, but there have been some instances where we've had money that's come in that would have gone to free cash, and as a result of people not paying their income taxes, uh, it got subtracted from the free cash pool. And uh, it's, it's a DOR basic approach to accounting that allows that to happen. Yet, we're not penalized from it to make up on a budget because actually that uncollected tax becomes an asset, you know, because we make a tax lien. But at the same time, we don't have use of that uh, cash and, uh, because they net it out. And in other words, they take it from our existing free cash and they say, well, it wasn't collected. And uh, it seems. To it's one of these things that's kind of hard to envision, it, yet at the same time, uh, uh, if that kind of a circumstance came about and we wanted to put money into this fund, we, were able, we would be able to do so. Otherwise, we would put it into perhaps, and we did this one year, into our stabilization fund and then we withdrew it in the previous year, uh, partially uh, withdrew it. Uh, the issue there is that, you know, when we're looking at going out for uh, uh, bonding projects, uh, you know, we reviewed uh, and uh, uh, credit rating could be changed as a result of what we're doing to a stabilization fund. So I don't know what the uh, Finance Committee's position is on this. Mr. Jones, you had a question? Yeah. yeah. Two questions. Unexpended school budget funds. Mm -hmm. Can the school committee on their own place it into this fund, or does it have to go through town meeting? Well, it would have to go through town meeting. Mm -hmm. It would be a voter town meeting. Yeah. Secondly, if it's a stabilization fund, it will require two thirds vote. That's correct. To expend it. That's correct. Any other. Right. Thank you. That's always been that's been part of their concern. I well, think. Yes, Mr. O'Leary. I don't think this is treated the same as our regular stabilization. No, fund. it's not. No. So it isn't necessarily a. Four fifths or two thirds. I don't know. I, I right. was under. I understood. No, it, would, it would not be. Simple it would or would not be. Uh, no, 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 no. Special purpose stabilization fund under uh, Section Five B is a two thirds vote. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I will take this one. Article fourteen, uh, except MGL Chapter Thirty Two B Section Twenty for unfunded <coughs> pension liability. This is one that we plan on. Passing over. No, no, no I'm no. sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. The, the, the that was the other one. The other suggests <laughs> right. that we do this. Right. Of income. Yes, Mr. Bell. A uh, brief summary of, of what the uh, acceptance of the MAR entails. Uh, the government entity must retain an actuary to establish a funding schedule. We do that. The schedule must be reviewed and be approved by PARAC. Um, in addition, the schedule must be reviewed every three years by the chief executive. And any update must be reviewed by the Parex actuary as well. The government entity is not required to make any appropriations into the fund according to the schedule, but any appropriation said made shall be held in a trust for OPEP obligations. So basically what it does, it puts us on the track to be able to fund it. It establishes a commitment from the town, which is critical in terms of showing that we're financially viable, but it doesn't necessarily require that we do fund it, but it does make a commitment to in, in this unfunded, uh, I, I'm sorry, I was thinking of another article. This unfunded pension liability is, you know, something that hangs over our head. Uh, our auditor has uh, strongly recommended we do this because it could reduce uh, the impact of uh, uh, the, uh, the impact of our uh, retiree uh, Pension and health insurance is the big thing. Right. Because health insurance is also it, included in here. Right. It, by setting this up, it reduces our impact on the health and uh, employee health and uh, pension. This is sponsored by the FinCom. Mm. Are they making the motion? No, I think in general we've made uh, these motions, Steve. Okay, I'm just. 
Someone want to read the motion? I'll do it. Okay. And uh, currently it's recommended by both the board and the FinCon. Mr. Jones, one more question. Uh, first, just a general comment. In 1998, annual town meeting through the whole new position established the retirement trust. It still exists. It's not, has, hasn't been used in recent years, and I think it's become somewhat forgotten. The purpose of that was for annual normal retirement. Mm -hmm. Yes. In regards to this article, the 2008 town meeting approved a post-employment benefit, but under a different general law. Now, I'm assuming this article is because this is a general law more appropriate for that purpose. If that's true, yeah, it should be a rescission article for the 2008 Article 9, which we poured the tremendous sum of one dollar into it, but still is there, I guess, and we might want to retrieve that. <laughs> we could transfer it into this account. Mm -hmm. But if, if this is the preferred way, then sometime, at least by April, we should have uh, a decision. I, I'll ask the town administrator to look into that, and in a future meeting we can make Did a the recommendation. Auditor, the auditor raised that, I think, said that that was the improper vehicle to do what we were attempting to do. He said this is the this He said he said the vehicle. bond companies, the bond trading agencies looked at that and said, What are they doing this for? And that's not the yeah, right way to right. do it and so on and so but forth. If you want to reference it, it's Article Nine, two thousand and eight, October time. This this law didn't exist until January two thousand and nine. So it was yeah. And I wasn't quite clear. The auditors have recommended that we do this because it has an impact on our uh, No, I, I understand our the purpose, bond rate. that's the same reason that we've done it in a Article 16 was the, uh, we've already gone through 16, that, 17, 17 CPC, CPC does all those. 18, 19 was CPC, uh, 20, 21 we've already done, 22. Restrictions on water use. <coughs> this article is related to give us <coughs> more teeth in uh, dealing with uh, people that are not conforming to the uh, water restrictions uh, with violations and penalties. Uh, and actually giving us the ability, as I recall, to uh, Turn water off if uh, we don't get cooperation, Mr. Balconis. Uh, board members, there are two components. The first is, as you said, is that uh, it establishes the presently the board uh, the proposed languages the board second may adopt and period periodically amend rules and regulations relating to procedures and administration of Chapter 191, Article 2 after a public hearing notice. So basically, you hold a public hearing, you determine what the appropriate rules and regulations are and then those rules and regulations become enacted. Mm -hmm. the, the problem with the bylaws doesn't provide flexibility to, to adapt the situation. The second piece is um, in 191-10, uh, which is the violations and penalties section, inclusion of language that gives the town the right to shut off water supply or service for disregard of water restrictions in cases uh, where there is a water supply conservation or a state of water supply emergency as we experienced in July. Um, the bylaw as it exists today does not give the town that authority. Uh, council did rule on it, look at it. Um, we submitted to DEP, and DEP came back and said to us that it's vital to ensure compliance in the future that we include language that does give the town that opportunity in the future, and that's what this is intended to do. Okay. Questions? Bob, I was just thinking about this too. As far as the violation section, I mean, as we shut them off, we're shooting ourselves in the foot again as far as the water deficit. <laughs> but part of the penalties that we should be uh, possibly availing ourselves of is doubling the rate for those that aren't complying. Rather than shutting them off, charge them more. 
that just it may take more than doubling, but so, yeah, yeah, double, yeah, whatever, you know, whatever it is, so that uh, they encourage them to uh, participate.